Before we get started, please take the time to like, add, and subscribe to our pages on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and iTunes. Also, please leave us a review. And even the wind, right? The wind was warm. Uh, so the, 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 the ice was melting and it just sounded because it was melting into like chunks and it sounded like glass, just like brushing up against itself just because it was just crumbling. Just sh- sh- yeah, yeah. So you can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink, clink, clack, blappity dap, gook a dap, ba bap. You know what I'm starting to notice is a lot of the drinks that you have are of the color red. Well, I like I, I like going to Walmart and getting uh, they have that like fruit punch in like a gallon jug for like two bucks. Is it Hawaiian punch? No, it's, it's just fruit punch. I don't. It's generic brand. Oh, <laughs> it's so generic. It's good. Do you it's like, make Hawaiian punch anymore? Now that I oh think yeah, it, I don't know if I've seen it. It's expensive. That's why I don't get it. Really, I feel like Hawaiian uh, punch is just not as popular as it used to be. No, I, it's not. But I ball out on. Uh, I ball out on um, Fiji water. I'm a Fiji water guy. <sighs> I mean, it's like good what, water. It's, it's. I like what they're doing too over there. Um. I've always been a supporter. Do you reuse the bottle? Um, not here. Not let me the, give you. Let me give you the, uh, the. Not in the sense that you're thinking. I reuse it like throughout the day. I have the water. Oh, see, here's here's what this this for anybody that's low on money but wants to look like they have some class. You buy your Fiji water, you drink the Fiji water once, and then you use it for like a month. Keep using that water bottle because then everybody will go like, this guy drinks a lot of Fiji water. No, but little do they know, it's mostly tap water. No, 100%. That's not a bad idea. And recycling, reducing, reusing, do it. Do it up. I, that's actually that's something the main reason I, you should do it. <laughs> I need to get better at. I really do. That is something I I need to, I kick myself about. Um, You live in Montana. They don't really uh, recycle out there. That's the hard thing. I was talking to uh, uh, our good friend. He's a teacher, uh, John Healy. Uh, He grew up with Josh. Um, Shout out Josh, if he's listening in. Um, He's not. (laughs) Josh don't listen to me. Um, but John, uh, came by cause I have, I have some copper that my dad's like, go take that down to the recycling. I like want to, but like the recycling people in Billings are the, like, if it's not like a fucking crushed car, we don't really care. You know, they do accept like aluminum bottles and stuff, but yeah. that's such a minuscule part of their operation that they just don't care about it. Oh, interesting. The, the customer service isn't really there yeah so it like it discourages me like i want to go recycle and whatnot but it discourages me because they're just how they treat it um (laughs) but i yeah yeah but also copper is kind of going up right now so i'm kind of riding that wave oh okay (laughs) (laughs) that's that's what we're really doing we're riding the wave we're not just being lazy and not uh recycling but no that's actually been a not just a um, comment about recycling in montana it's been a comment about recycling in a lot of areas that don't necessarily have uh, as easy of access because if you look at sections of the united states where they've made recycling like they have the garbage can bins that they collect like every week or every other like week. Oregon you can just yeah, say like, it like Oregon well I don't know not all of our listeners are from Oregon <laughs> if you're from it's Oregon good to give an know, example. It's, it's like the blue bin <laughs> and yeah, most, I know, but it's a good yeah, yeah. you but, got like four bins over there 
Um, but like that, like states that have a system like that, you can see recycling is up in those compared to states that don't have recycling in that similar kind of, or like the bottle returns at stores. Um, that's not a thing in every state, which I thought was until I like went elsewhere. Like California doesn't. Um, no, I think Oregon, it's like Oregon only. And I, I think that's a good thing. I, I think the, the bottle deposit that they have is a, it's, it's good because it, it's, it's making you want to recycle it to get your money back. You know, how they charge you initially. Cause it's like, we're not taking this money from you, but if you choose not to recycle, we're going to charge you for it. Oh you yeah. Know? The deposit system. That's I right. think that's a good system in this for, for recycling in a state like that. Cause like, honestly that, which it's really sad. You look at the pop can go, you know, I, I had a Coca-Cola where did I set her down. Can't even find her, but uh, you look at it. There's like four States on there. There's 50 Ugh. States guys. Like that's that's nuts, and we're not recycling. We need to recycle. It's uh, ten cents in Oregon, um, and the other thing is about Oregon is a lot of people just give their cans to the homeless because the homeless will do it, and that's how they'll make their money. <laughs> you know, I mean, and you can then. I'm curious if you could write that as a tax write off because you donated to the homeless, and you, there is a like I don't I here's all my, you save all your receipts from all the cans you buy, add it up. Ooh, that's interesting. That's an interesting uh, question to ask. I should, uh, I should ask my accountant about that. That'd be good. That would be a good one. So what have you been up to my guy? I heard, I heard you were, you were, uh, you finally have gotten some free time and you were watching Netflix or something. Not or watching an ad. Not watching Netflix. Um, I did have free time. Um, but I spent it seeing family back up in Seaside this week. Next week is the more fun one. Oh, yeah, um, it's just, I get to actually get out. I have to teach a CPR class, but that's a different topic, different podcast. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. What I wanted to talk to you about, what I want to talk to the, the, um, wanderers about is we're getting in the middle of April and in April on Netflix, there's going to be a documentary on the world's national parks. So not just like the United States, there's going to be some United States stuff, um, but the world's United or national parks, which is super exciting. It's super exciting that we're getting a look into the world's national parks. And it's going to be narrated by uh, former President Barack Obama. Oh, that's a banger. Yeah, I mean, I know, like, I know people. I, I'm don't excited. Like him. I think it's going to be a good series, and I think he's going to do a great job. But it's it's not Sir David Attenborough. I mean, that guy is the greatest voice known to man. I'm I, well. The reason I'm curious when, when you bring up David Attenborough, I'm curious if it's he is getting old, and that's why. Like it, like he kind of tapped out like last couple of years. Uh, and that's like why we heard his like last that one video he did. Oh, uh, yeah, like his, yeah. his he has his the book, yeah the book too. I mean, yeah. I'm sure he realizes any day could be his last. Oh, hundred percent, especially doing the profession you're doing, because he's out in wild. You know, something could happen to him. Yeah, <laughs> especially early early on in his career when like they were yeah he was he was a researcher. Um, I you know I I think. Obama, you know, like him or not, uh, that voice. Yeah, he does have a good voice. For nature is going to be great. Mm -hmm. And just the tone, uh, the reverence. His, uh, the way he, his repetition, you know. Yes. It's really unlike anything else. I always think there's some comedian that was imitating him and like would always make fun of the way that he probably says like peanut butter cup because it's like. I uh, really like uh, peanut butter cup and because of that repetition that he has. It can, I think it could work for a documentary. Like, Oh, I, I think that's because it's David Attenborough kind of has that. 
in a, yeah. in his own way, in his own way. So I think it's it's unique to the voice, you know, because like even Morgan Freeman kind of has a repetition in his. It's just that that beat, that tone, that yeah. It's 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 a warm kind of feeling, you know, and that's arguably you know one of the reasons Obama was elected president is 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 that mm -hmm. uh, is you could relate, you could feel with it, you would want to listen to a story from him. Uh, you know, he, he used the internet early and that's part of the reasons, you know, it's kind of crazy. 100%, um, but no, they're going to, it's going to be a five part series. Okay. Um, and it is coming out first, I believe, I don't know if they're dropping all of them at once or if they're going to do like a weekly thing. I'm willing to bet it's all at once. Uh, cause it's just a documentary series. Do you know what parks or how they're theming it? They're going to go by continents. Oh, yellow. They're, doing, yeah, they're yeah. doing five continents. Um, so they're going to break down the parks probably on each continent. Yeah, probably. Dang. So they're going, we're probably going to get some Banff, some Jasper, yeah. some Glacier. We're probably going to get some down in Mexico, down in the jungle. Probably There's get some supposed to be Delta like stuff. Monterey Bays in there. Um, nice. I saw. Oh, well, I got the thing up. I can tell you. A oh, dude, I'm I'm so stoked! Like this is exciting yeah. stuff, you know. Because yeah. not only is this exciting, but we got an exciting episode ahead. You know, we're going to break down Central Oregon, which is also unique. You know, who knows? Crater Lake might make this documentary. You know, because it's spectacular. It's beautiful. It's in Central Oregon. Um, I would I wouldn't say I wouldn't say uh, the town of Bend would make the video. But that's, well, that's, that's not a national park. Exactly. That's why. That's why I said it wouldn't. <laughs> You're not wrong. Uh, there's like one in Kenya that's going to be in there for sure. Um, they just had a real short list. They're like, you know, there's going to be um, shots from Kenya to California. So um, the all stars. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be the big ones, obviously. The bangers. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Are they going well, to? They, you know, them? I don't know. They may do some ones that people don't really know about, like worldwide. You know. Well, have you seen? And actually, by the time this episode's probably out, this thing will be pretty close to being live, huh? The documentary. Um. No, we'll have we'll have like another. I think it comes out next week for everyone that's listening. So it'll be soon. Um. I I think. <sighs> Yeah, actually, hey, like it will be it will be a week from today as you're listening to this. Nice, that's awesome. So, what about um, I'm, I'm thinking what parks are in there? Uh, are they going to feature the animals? Or are they going to feature the park? Like, what's the what's the vibe you got? I guess because you watched a, a trailer, I'm assuming. Uh, actually, I did not watch a trailer for it um i just i read an article on it um and apparently it's gonna be a big call for conservation is really what they were trying to get at um i i'm excited for it too the thing i'm worried about is i've heard documentary like producers and stuff say this one is really for conservation and trying to get conservation up and then they they highlight it, but they don't really do the best job at really like getting you going and trying to um, show conservation or get conservation going. Um, Who, who's producing it? I mean, this is a Netflix documentary, so it's straight up Netflix. It's not like Nat Geo or BBC. No, this is that, that that'll be interesting. I'm I'm curious because the reason we talk about that I, we talked about it when, during the Eastern Montana breakdown was the American Prairie Reserve. Oh, and, yeah. and and I'm curious with them because like they're trying to do conservation in in by making a private national park. So yeah, I don't get that. I wouldn't necessarily think that would be uh, get that vibe um, because the Obamas are very heavily in involved in the producing yeah. and everything in it, and um, just. I don't think the Obama kind of platform is for that private park. I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. But that's good. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. You got me excited. 100%. But, you know, until, until then, we'll, maybe we'll have to talk about it then because it's got us going today. 
Yeah, next um, week for anybody who's listening, April 13th is when it's coming out on Netflix. So you do have to have a Netflix subscription, which is always kind of a bummer if you don't. Um, but anyways, we will jump into the meat of today, um, which is another Wandering Ways breakdown. This time, uh, we are going to the great state of Oregon. Oregon. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah, that's Oregon. how the, the degenerates say it. <laughs> um, but no, we're going to go to the great state of Oregon. We've done um, an Oregon coast breakdown so if you want to go to the oregon coast make sure to check out that um episode it is in our other shows so check it out we have a lot of great breakdowns and uh, this one is hopefully going to be another one of those but this one it's central oregon and i don't mean what everyone else literally calls central oregon which is just this one little uh, group which is like smack dab not technically in the middle but it's pretty close to the middle, which is the Ben Sisters uh, Redmond area. I mean, if we just did a whole middle line, um, right through Thanks. top to bottom, Washington to California, middle of Oregon. Basically the Cascade Mountains. So, you know, through Oregon, you have uh, Mount Hood, you have the Sisters Mountains, um, all the way, you know, Crater Lakes kind of in there. I don't know the other mountains going south as well. Isn't there There's Bachelor, mountains? Jefferson, Broken Top, um, McLaughlin's in there. Um, McLaughlin's closer to Crater Lake, but. But all the way down, you know, you can argue Shasta in, in Northern California kind of falls into this, I wouldn't say Central Oregon range, but it essentially could just kind of based on how the cascades are, you know, it's similar. Well, it but is, I believe it is a cascade. Oh, hundred um, percent. And then I would say you kind of fall into the central Oregon, you know, cascades when you talk about. Yeah. The range. Um, um, yeah, no, hundred percent. And I mean, we've talked about like, you know, Crater Lake and Mount Shasta and Lassen, um, those areas, um, which is another fantastic breakdown of a cluster. So make sure you go check out that one. Um, but no, no, no. This one, we're just sticking to the great state of Oregon. Um, yeah. And for this, we're going to actually start at the north end of it. So right there um, in an area that a lot of people probably actually know of or have at least heard of, which is the Columbia River Gorge. Um, so it, oh, very, very, very beautiful. Highly recommend going, uh, even if you just do the drive from like the Dalles to Portland. Um, so then the gorge is big, and I guess technically you can say the gorge does at times kind of fall out of the central Oregon boundaries that we've created when you get closer to Portland. Um, it's like interesting. It, it's not enough to really it's not it's not enough out of it to not put it in this breakdown no i think that's perfect because you kind of when you're in central oregon there's different ways of getting there and i think when people are in as a tourist into oregon traveling you sometimes start in portland now how you make your way to central oregon is very different you know because sometimes people just they kind of bypass the gorge and they go straight to the Redmond Bend uh, area, sisters area, yeah. like you said, at that actual central organ that like it is referred to. Like yeah. Portland, how when Portlandiers refer to central organ, that's what they're referring to. But when you think about the gorge, you know, you have towns like the Dalles, Hood River, uh, Cascade Locks, um, mm -hmm. and that's kind of that northern slope of Mount Hood. Um, so there's really good river, there's salmon fishing, um, Matt really likes in Cascade Locks that Native American owned, uh, salmon shop. Um, he makes sure we stop there every time. Yeah. Uh, he, he, have you ever heard the story of the first time stopping there? No. Okay. Cause it's actually, it's, it's a great, it's a classic Matt story. Um, we went and did uh, a hike in the Mount Hood areas to a waterfall, which is a ton of waterfalls in, um, in just Oregon in general. Especially um, off that gorge there, which is yes. awesome. 
Yes, Multnomah Falls is a great one you'll see. Uh, but this one's a little bit closer to Mount Hood. It's a little bit on um, that kind of eastern, northeastern side of Mount Hood. I wish I could remember the name of it, but it's been so long um, since I've been there that I can't. But it was me, uh, Matt, and Rachel. And we were going over from Corvallis to do this hike. When we left Corvallis, Matt's like, hey, like, can we stop at this like jerky, jerky place, fish market, whatever it was. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a great place. I love it. I love it. I love it. And so Rachel and I are like, oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Like we have no problem stopping at a place Matt likes. So we pull into Cascade Locks and he's like, turn here. So we turn and we go completely wrong. We're not even close to where it actually is. And we're like, Matt, where are you taking us? He's like, I don't know. I'm not really sure where it is. And we're like, well, have you actually ever been to it? And he goes, no. <laughs> and so Rachel and I were like, you told us you love it. And he goes, yeah, but I've never been. <laughs> so uh, we ended up finding it. And I've been a few times since. But <laughs> he'll, he'll give you his heart early, huh? Yeah, he found it in a magazine. And he That's was not like, for you. He, I, he's like that's i like he acts like he's been there <laughs> yeah he's an interesting dude man that's matt um but you know another good spot i think is hood river i've spent actually quite a bit of time in hood river because you got like the wind surfers right there on the columbia uh you know the paris paragliders sa sailors um good pizza i mean oregon has good pizza all over i think portland was rated the best pizza in the country you know, well, you know what I think it is, too, is think of Alaska, right? There's pizza everywhere in Alaska because pizza is cheap. It's easy. It's been around for a while. I'm, I'm sure Oregon on the Oregon Trail, like that's just it's one of those recipes that's just been around and been perfected for hundreds of years. You know what I mean? It's where it got to come from, you know, the pizza. Maybe. No, but Hood River is actually really gorgeous. Um, Hood River is actually very underrated um place to go there's a lot of if you go in the spring late spring kind of early summer uh when the fruit is really kind of uh, like that. the fruit in that area is amazing uh oregon strawberries are to die for um, but berry season's fantastic because there's a lot of fruit farms out in that area because especially you know when you if you drive through Hood river taking the highway through the gorge you'll see you're kind of in the gorge. But if you go actually from on top of the gorge into like Mount or Hood River that way, it is like fruit farms and beautiful views. It is phenomenal how crazy the view can get um, when you get just above it. And you get, that's when you get to really see like Mount Hood, like just pop and uh, you see the gorge and everything. You're like, whoa, this place is amazing. Well, that sounds like when I'm out in Oregon, something I'm going to have to do. Yeah, I highly, yeah. highly recommend it. Um, you, you got me excited, I guess. <laughs> I, yes. <laughs> but from I, there, you can actually head down. Um, Hood River, you know, that's the pop, one of the ways you can hop down. You can hop down to the Highway 35, um, and that takes you, like, into Mount Hood. Um which Mount Hood is the popular, it's the iconic mountain of Oregon. Uh, if you're a skier, great place to ski. There's actually a lot of uh, great hiking around there as too. You can also climb Mount Hood. It's a bit technical of a climb. Um, but I know people have done it and they say they it's pretty easy. Um, there's a really cool waterfall called, I believe it's Ramona Falls. Um, I've been to it. It's a really, really, really cool, cool one there. Um, it, you actually take part of the PCT when you do that. Oh. Um, but government camp, um, getting actually like up into Mount Hood there, uh, in that area is really, really cool. Uh, it's a beautiful drive as most of it is. Um, but it, if you don't want to go to the mountain and you're from the gorge or in the gorge, you can go to the Dalles and down. See, I've taken I've taken this way before. 
And uh, you've gone through like mopping? All the way, yeah, all the way through Madras down because we were doing the county fairs out there. So we actually stayed in the Dalles, uh, nice little, nice little town. Uh, and then we just drove, drove straight on down uh, that way. And then you've kind of followed the river there, which is really pretty in some spots. And the Deschutes River, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, well, I was going to share a really cool secret to people because um, you hear about this town called Moppin. <laughs> and um, it's a very small town, but really what's the thing to do in this town is whitewater rafting. So if you like to whitewater raft, Moppin is the place to do it. Um, it's, I think a lot of the guy, there's a lot of guiding companies out of Moppin. Oh, yeah. Um, I haven't been in a, to Moppin in a while, but um, I know growing up, we did whitewater rafting out of Moppin, um, and it's a blast. Oh, I bet. Bit of a cool little town because it's, um, the river is like very steep in parts of it. Yeah. Um, which is kind of cool because it's kind of eerie because you're just, it's so steep at this part, but. You're in the canyon kind of ask of the river. Yeah, it's kind of this weird canyon-esque kind of deal. Um, which is very cool. But if you're whitewater rafting, which um, is amazing, and you should definitely go and give that one a shot, Moppin is the place to do whitewater rafting when you're doing the Central Coast. Or not Central Coast, Central Oregon, sorry. Um, and then from Moppin, keep going south. That's when you're going to hit the Redmond um, kind of area. Um, just before Redmond, um, you've probably heard of it if you've heard of Oregon before, but it's Smith Rock. Um, it's probably the most popular state park in, or no, probably second most popular uh, state park. First being Multnomah Falls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, second's probably Smith Rock. A lot of people, a lot of people go. Uh, it's a great hike. You go up top smith rock you see monkey face you see the rock climbers all that fun jazz um i know people that run it i know people that just go hike it i know people that just go spend the day there uh, i know people that go rock climbing there um there's it's a real it's a real cool and that one's just a little bit north of um redmond in a town called like terrebonne or something oh terrebonne yeah um, a lot of biking when you get out there, not necessarily mountain biking in that part of uh, central Oregon. Um, you'll see a lot more road bikes. Uh, people will bike from like Sisters out there and then to Redmond or Bend or whatnot. Big old loops um, on these road bikes. Yeah. Have you ever been to Smith Rock? I haven't been to Smith Rock, but I've been to Redmond and Bend for uh, the county fair stuff. But yeah, I've seen pictures. Uh, I know our good buddy Toos, uh, he really liked like doing that smith rocks very cool um yeah. there were times uh towards the, my last few years in corvallis um i would make just a day trip out there before really yeah because i mean it's only hour and a half maybe two hours from corvallis um, see that's the nice thing about i really i did like about corvallis is you're close enough to portland to make it a day trip you're close enough to like salem to even eugene uh to bend to, new to really you know and the coast and everything's a day trip from there yeah you know that, like that. that is a perk about corvallis so uh if you're not if you're deciding on where you want to go to college go to corvallis or in state go beefs <laughs> <laughs> uh but no, so then, then you get into Redmond and Bend, um, which they're so close that they're really, yes, they're two different cities. And I'm sure the people of Bend and Redmond will fight over the differences. Um, but they're really very, very similar um, in a lot of ways. And there's a lot of outdoor stuff to do. I think we talked about it. Um, I talked about it in my uh, warm weather destinations because this is the spot i said because there's a fuck ton to do really um there's the river you can just shoot river you can do stuff all up and down it you know fish you can whitewater raft it you can uh you can swim in it 
you know, people will go paddle boarding, um, that kind of stuff. Float it. Uh, people will literally just float through town uh, in Bend, which is a lot of fun. Uh, the beer is fantastic. Um, if you're doing Central Oregon, you're not doing Central Oregon right if you're not spending at least a couple uh, days, if not a whole week, if you really can, in just this one area. Um, if you want to do all of Central Oregon in a week or uh, however long, I would make Bend your home base because um, it is uh, the center of Central Oregon. You know, it's only a couple hours to Crater Lake. It's only a couple hours to the Dalles and the Gorge. It's uh, maybe an hour to Mount Hood. Uh, you get into the Sisters Mount Bachelor area. I mean, this is the area to like stay and make your home base. There's a ton of lakes. Um, the hiking is incredible. Although if you do plan to hike, uh, make sure you look into permits for certain hikes. Um, some of them you have to sign up a week before. Some of them you can sign up at the trailhead, but they started doing a permit system because uh, it was it's becoming so popular and uh it's becoming kind of unsafe to be on the roads on these like little one or one direction or two two-way single lane kind of uh, highways that weave in and out of these lakes and uh, mountains and stuff um i think I, I think i told the story about how i almost got caught by a ranger because i didn't know the permit system and i was like running down the side of the hill <laughs> yeah that's what you're saying yeah um, i i'm looking i'm i'm, I'm just a kind of offhand thought but i'm looking at the lakes in oregon there you know down there's a lot of lakes down in the especially the southern part of the state and you look at like the reservoirs because you can tell they're dammed up a lot of them um and just look at the like dried up parts of the lake mm -hmm. on the map and it's just like oh my gosh like what what probably once was a lot of water is now not a lot of water. Yeah, we're uh, technically most of Oregon is in a drought. And I say most of Oregon because I think the only place not in the drought is like the North Oregon coast. Oh, like Astoria? Yeah. Um, that's still not, it's still very wet up there. Um, but no, there are a ton of lakes. There's a very cool scenic kind of road that's only open part of the year, the Cascade Lakes Highway. Um, that will take you kind of towards uh, Eugene, um, a little bit south um, that way. Uh, I've never done the full drive. Uh, I know uh, some people that have. It's very pretty. I've done parts of it. Um, I've camped along in there. Uh, that's where South Sister Summit is technically. That trailhead is kind of uh, technically on part of that highway. Um, You're talking this one that kind of jets off. It's like a loop, the Conklin Road. No, 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 no. It's, um, it goes right in between kind of Mount Bachelor and the Sisters. Oh, you're talking about Highway 20 or the Mackenzie River Bridge to Sisters? Um, let me see. The old Mackenzie Highway. Yeah, I think it's the old Mackenzie Highway. Okay. That's near the Blue Pool, huh? No, there's the Mackenzie River Highway, um, which that is technically north of this one. Okay. So um, this Makes highway, uh, it's... It's not, it's more of a scenic byway, really. Right. If I had to like give it a true name because it goes from Bend and then it will come down. And there's, I think it's like Highway 56, which is a highway that will take you like to Crater from Eugene. Okay. Um, so, whereas the McKinsey River Highway that you're talking about is north and that will take you. Uh, Eugene to the sisters essentially because um, the sisters is basically where I think it's three different highways all kind of converge on the sisters it really depends if you want to start from I think it's Albany all right so it's Salem uh, you start in Albany or Corvallis more so or Eugene um, mm -hmm. they all converge and then they'll connect in the sisters and sisters to bend 
and then that's where Hoodoo is another ski resort, um, you know, all that fun stuff in that area. You're kind of up in there. You're along the PCT. Uh, you know, the PCT basically runs uh, Central Oregon right, right down the middle of it. Um, so this is this is the not as crazy way of doing the central Oregon is by car uh, <laughs> instead of hiking it. You can hike it, be a lot of fun. Would love to kind of do it maybe sometime. Um, and you can call it the PCT. Um, but yeah, that's the Bend kind of sisters area. It is full of a ton of cool shit because there's so much cool shit to do in there. So I was kind of thinking of getting into sport fishing again, but I feel like I need a good quality net. Well, you know what, Reverend? I got the key solution for you. You know, our friends at Blue Ribbon Net make this eco-friendly aquafade bag so you're not hurting the environment. It's 100% biodegradable. Plus, the wood is locally sourced and it is also biodegradable and it's just such a great company to use. Um, the Blue Ribbon Nets, they're here in Bozeman, Montana. And we even have a discount code. That's right. If you use the code RUGARU10, that's right. That's my Jeep, the RUGARU. RUGARU10, R-U-G-A-R-U-1-0. Uh, you're going to get some discount on a Blue Ribbon Net. You know, you can get the long one if you're fishing the big fish, or you can get just the good river one, you know, if you're like me and just want to catch a lot of fish. So again, make sure you go check out Blue Ribbon and use the promo code RUGARU10. Hey, hey there, Reverend. Um, I heard that you might be running dry on your sticker supplier. Yeah, I've been looking around and I've kind of like run out of cool stickers to buy and put on water bottles and stuff. Well, I, I mean, have you seen the stuff Josh has been coming out with lately? No, I have not. Well, he is doing some really cool stuff with the Shop LS574. Yes, they're working with indigenous communities and making some really cool stickers. Um, he has a really cool Buffalo Mountain sticker. There's even water bottles, hats, sweatshirts, the whole swag. And we even got a discount code for you guys. Yes, if you use Wandering Ways at Shop LS574, you're going to be getting a discount on your next purchase. But not only that, you're going to be giving a percentage of that sale to the Little Shell Tribe, as well as they donate a dollar of every sale to murdered and missing indigenous women. So just such a cool thing going on there. You know, you use the code Wandering Ways, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G-W-A-Y-S, and you put that in there, boom, you're getting a discount. And speaking of cool shit, it's time for your boy's favorite segment, Cool Shit in Nature. That's and you, you, yeah. the, your boy. <laughs> this week, I have two great ones. Um, they're, I'll be honest, I would say they're different from ones I normally do. At least I think. Oh, so they're not animals killing other animals. There, well, there's one. There's one of them is animals trying to kill animals, um, but this one is like there's some kind of goat gazelle like creatures that are sitting on a ledge while some oh. wild dogs try to get at them. But because oh. they're just chilling on such a steep ledge, yeah, it, uh, they can't get to them. I'm surprised the dogs don't like honestly like push them right there because like it's not that far of a drop you don't think for the dog. I I think it's just enough. You know, cuz I mean look at he's really really trying right there. He needs like a stick in his mouth. Yeah, just to kind of poke it. <laughs> cuz it's I mean this dog this wild dog is getting maybe a foot away. Yeah. And it's kind of, I mean, you can see that he's close to jumping right here. But those other ones, look at the, yeah, I think you're fine if you go for those other two. Look at that. that no, I that. think, I think they're on a little bit more of a steeper 
like there's this real steep part and then like where they're standing it's a little bit more flat but i think it's harder to get to them but if you can get to that spot you would get them yeah i don't know Next, next one no <laughs> <laughs> the next one um i thought this was a crazy one i wanted to talk to you or show you and then talk, talk to about. me yeah it's a dust storm that's nuts they have these down in like arizona and stuff yeah i've heard i've heard um it it, it would be really wild to see this i don't think we ever had anything like that in albuquerque when i lived there no I don't think so. Maybe. Yeah. This is kind of a cool. Uh, like, yeah, I got to pull over. <laughs> Smart timing. Yeah. Look at that wall. Yeah. That's what's crazy is the height and the like sheer just like wall of like a dust storm. It shows you kind of that first layer of wind though, where it yeah. sits. It is really kind of. This is in New Zealand, I believe. Uh, oh, New Zealand, huh? yeah yeah the kiwis <laughs> um yeah this would be you've never been in one i don't know no don't question me uh, <laughs> on live tv oh it's live <laughs> oh it's live my uh my sister has been in one in arizona i bet and scared shitless i bet you just pull over and kind of hope the best she's still here huh as far as I know, now she is. <laughs> She's still here. Um, it would be, I mean, like you see a little bit of a glimpse in um, that time lapse where the guy pulls over and then it just gets dark. Like that's, that's what would be super eerie. Is just nighttime dark for a good good chunk of change. Probably like an hour or two. It's got to be, you know, probably just. Oh my, yeah, Australia, not New Zealand. Sorry. I'm down under. Yeah, yeah. This is down under, not uh, not on the island. <laughs> not a hop over. No, 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 no. No, that's good. That's good shit. My my grandparents actually uh, had a cabin on Crescent Lake down there in in, in kind of Crescent Lake, Oregon. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like a family cabin my grandpa had for ever. And then he finally sold it, I would say, like, 10 years ago. But huh? part of it was because he was renting from the Forest Service. Oh. And the lease was just a ridiculous amount. It was, yeah. you can't cut down trees. If you want to update something, you have to run it by us, kind of. So he was just not about that. And he got he actually got a beach house instead. But they... Uh, it, it was a cool place. That's my where my boat grew up was Crescent Lake. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I mean, there's a lot of lakes uh, in this area. I mean, Detroit Lake, that's a yep. very common one um, for people to go spend um, large amounts of time um, at. It's got your classic fishing, trout fishing kind of deal. Um, I know a lot of people that go trout fishing um, in the central oregon area top to bottom people do it um more salmon when you get up to the gorge because you got the chinook the chinook uh, kind of run um on the columbia river um which is a salmon fish if people are unaware but no we're going to keep going a little bit south of um of bend that area this is um probably the least populated area of um the central oregon um trek that you're going to be on uh, you get into a lot more kind of dead space but you know what is really cool actually when you get down in here is you have like uh, they have these like lava beds so it's a lava rock so it's all it's not like live active lava um but there's a lot of old volcanic activity because the Cascades are such a volcanic kind of mountain. Um, so you'll get a lot of the lava kind of beds um, in this area. They're super cool. I mean, they're classic, just like yards forever of just rock um, that, you know, 
earth created. <laughs> well, and that's something I think you people forget about Central Oregon is the Cascade Mountains are active volcanoes. You know, they, yeah. they you know, Mount St. Helens still pops smoke every once in a while. You know, it, it went up. Mount Hood has an overdue date. You know, don't they all have overdue dates? Yeah, I, I think, I think the only one people are really kind of concerned about like blowing wise is St. Helens. Like it's the most active. The rest are pretty uh, dormant. Um, that's good. Yeah. That, cause uh, that's the one, you know, when I hiked St. Helens, you could see the dome like steaming and stuff. So like that one was still, still kind of doing its thing and it erupted. Um, In the eighties. Well, no, no, that was the big one. That was the big one. Um, but it it erupted again, like very, very, very small um, oh. amounts. Um, sometime when I was growing up, because I remember being on the news all the time. And, oh, they're just kind of actively watching it. Yeah, and, and you know, it, like it would spew up, um, but like the one we the volcano of the Tonga um, volcano that we showed a couple weeks ago. Like that was much, much bigger than like what St. Helens was doing. Yeah. St. Helens, when it re erupted, like um, for uh, like the smaller ones, it, it would look like a glorified chimney, to be honest. Um, like someone just really was having a bonfire and had a chimney kind of deal. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. But well, that's how Crater Lake lost its top, was a volcano. That's how Crater Lake became Crater Lake. <laughs> Because it, it blew ginormously and then filled up with water. Kind of crazy, huh? Yeah, super crazy. Um, but that is down south on the central Oregon, good old Crater Lake, which we have talked about on the podcast. So we're not going to go into super details about Crater Lake. I think it's something to look forward to because in a couple of weeks we'll actually be hanging out possibly there. And we yeah, we're, we're hoping to get in there. Um, and we can talk about it with our with our friends. Exactly. We can give a WWR Wandering Ways review um, of Crater Lake because we're hoping to do it. Um, don't know what the weather's going to be like for us when we get down there, to be honest. Um, or I guess up for me, down for you. Um, and across from them. Yeah. And across, and across from you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There could be some snow. Okay. Um, you know, we've had a couple late flurries, but it's been pretty warm lately. Uh, I think it's 60s all this week, but it was like high 70s last week. So, you know, it's six, it was 75 in Billings, Montana today. It's both supposed to be 60s for the next week. I went, like I said, I went out on the kayak uh, this, this last weekend out on West Rosebud, and there was still ice on the water. But as I was, uh, as I was kind of drifting away, you know, as the day went on and the heat kind of got hotter as the day went on and even the wind, right. The wind was warm. Uh, so the, 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 the ice was melting and it just sounded because it was melting into like chunks and it sounded like glass, just like brushing up against itself. Just cause it was just crumbling. Just. Yeah. Yeah. It was That's so cool. cool. Yeah. So cool. No, hopefully um, when we do it, we can get some uh, cool hikes in. Um, I think it'd be a good time because it won't be as populated either. Not a lot of people. That's my thought. So, you know, maybe we can go do the hike that takes you like to the water. Um, cool. You're just, you, you read the back of my brain like it's no problem. Like what I want to do in places. Yeah, well, it, it, that depends a lot on how much snow. Well, yeah, but if it, if, if there's I'm still curious a good what, amount of snow, then that part of the uh, park will probably be closed. I'm curious with your winter over there. Like here, I'm. There's no snow in the Bear Goose, man. Like there is, but there's like like we could go do the Mystic Lake hike and we'd be fine. Oh really? Yeah, you know, I. I'll be honest, I don't think snow will be a problem, but I just know they don't they don't really touch a whole lot of crater. Like I don't think they do any plowing. I think no. they let nature takes it take its course type deal. No, that makes sense. 
So, but late April, we never know. Yeah, it it really. I, I'm not. I you know I'm not a betting person to begin with, but I don't know if I would put money on either or um, for this because it could really be either or. Yeah, we'll ride it. It's like the Bear Tooth Pass Memorial Day weekend. Will it be open this year? I'll bet. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, that's that's well, plenty to do if not. Um, but then the kind of the last stop in central kind of Oregon, um, it, on our central Oregon adventure is Klamath, um, Klamath, Oregon, uh, beautiful. There's a lake, there's a, a bald eagle refuge. Um, oh, wow. A lot of bald eagles will go to the part of the state. Um, so if you're looking for a bald eagle, um, honestly, hang out in the gorge, you'll probably see one, but this is another hot spot for a lot of them. It's down there. Um, it's another kind of pretty area. You're kind of a little bit higher. You got a lot going on. You do. Uh, there's some people I know over there. They they do a lot of trail running kind of stuff. So um, and the views they do is always amazing. So it's this was the other fair I did. And it, it the town itself reminded me kind of like a Billings, just kind of like a, just a little different, you know, where it's just like, yeah, there's not much going on, but there's some going on. Um, yeah. You're kind of separated from Portland and the rest of Oregon for sure. You definitely get, get that vibe. Yeah. Um, I, I like, I like, I liked it. It's pretty down there. Um, speaking of bald eagles also yesterday, I was on the side of the road. And I pulled over, uh, kind of leaving the area, and there's this bald eagle who was sitting on this branch in the water. I was like, God, the one time I don't have my camera, you know? Ugh. And he's just sitting there perfect, probably for a good minute or two. And I sat there. I turned the car off and everything just to, like, watch him. Mm -hmm. And then another truck was coming around the bend, and it kind of scared him away. But, yeah, bald eagles, like, I would say, like, that they do great things at that refuge, I know. And, and, and definitely go check, like, they're, they're good creatures. They're interesting creatures to watch. They are. They are very um, cool to kind of like see. I remember being up in Alaska, seeing a ton of them up there. Um, they're always kind of cool um, to see. Well, was, I was driving home yesterday from Seaside and I saw it's a fake one, but it's to keep, um, it's to keep geese from getting into people's fields. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, and this is going to totally, we're going to wander away real quick on this one, but, um, I'm waiting for the day farmers or somebody creates kind of like a very lifelike drone that like, they just fly every once in a while around their fields to get rid of any geese that could be coming through, you know? I, you know, you are on to something cause like, I'm sure. I'm sure it would be run by like a cat, like the ag, the ag commissioner. You would yeah. set that up to where it's like, we fly over all these farms at like five o'clock every day. Oh shoot. Not only like that, but like if an individual farmer that like on these huge farms, like technology has got to be at the point where you can almost like program a pre-made route and just like every day at 10 a.m., just it starts to go and it just does its route and then it stops and docks and then charges and goes again yeah, yeah. Two hours later just goes again i, I agree I, I mean it's out there it's happening it's yeah you, you would think it would be um but, but jared just told me his drone broke again so he oh really it, yeah i had the issue wind picked up and it just knocked it down to the ground and he yeah, just today. Yeah, and he uh that sucks kind of upset. No. That really sucks. That's why one of the reasons I just didn't get a drone is because I've heard like unless you get a really nice one, then uh they break. Spend the money on a nice one. Spend the money on uh the insurance if you're getting a drone because uh, you're gonna it, like Jared, he's like, you know, I pay $120 to replace it. He goes, that yeah, it's 120 bucks, but it's two grand if I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
And that 120, it's, it's, he says it's worth it. He says it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, you do get good shit. Like I've seen good footage come from his drone. Oh, okay. There you go. I honestly don't see myself getting a drone anytime soon, but no. Um, but I know a lot of people that love them. So it's got to be worth it. A little column A, a little column B, a little F and P in between. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, but anyways, so that is Central Oregon uh, from the Gorge down to Klamath. Um, there's a, a lot, lot to do. Yeah. If you're, if you're into hiking, if you're into biking, if you're into rafting, if you're into um, out rock climbing, if you're into skiing, if you're into... Boating. Into what? Boating. Boat, yeah, boating. Boating's that, that's uh, big. There's honestly, I'm trying to think of stuff that you can't do. Um, Bend was Bend before Bozeman was Bos Angeles. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, very much so. Um, if you like beer, this is the place to go. Um, but I highly recommend it if you're coming to Oregon, check it out. Um, it's very cool. If you're not heading to the coast, to check out. The how coast. much? How much time would you recommend to just do a do a to get a good feel? of central oregon to do up and down take the highway hit the spots how many days would you recommend minimum minimum three days okay. you can do three days and get a decent chunk um, and feel like you've done somewhat um, i really kind of recommend a week to be honest okay. um, you can spend a, two days in the gorge three days in Bend, in that area, and then two days down in kind of Crater Lake um, in that area. I like it. Um, that's that's the reverend perspective. I really like want to get at it. Um, yeah. That's what I would do, spend a week here. Um, but yes, so that leads us into our final words. Um, I'm going to be that guy. So final words, my guy. I love on your screen you point that way, and on my screen I'm this way, like I'm the other way. So it's funny. So hopefully, how it edits out, it edits out good. So, um, if I don't know how much of the video you watch later, but when I do the editing, everything is actually flipped. Mm. So, me pointing the opposite way when everyone else just sees it as me pointing the correct way. Um, and I found this out the hard way <laughs> doing a lot of editing. That's how, that's the only way to find it out, I think, but yeah, it's all good, my man. Hey, so my final words today are go out, find these trips that, you know, these, these little areas of your world, you know, I'm sure you're in Washington, you have a little neck of the woods, highway you could take a three-day to five-day trip on you know i know for sure out here in montana you take the highway 200 and just figure it out or highway two and go up the high line and you know down in utah you could probably find a highway to take and new mexico you know jump around up in the mountains up there and there's just all these great places to go to and check out and see and 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 go make the experience you know i think I went, I went fishing with Jared, you know, on the Yellowstone this last weekend. And it, and we, um, it, it was like, we have to be home by five. We have to be home by five because he, he's just that way. So he has to be at his home by five. And to me, it's like, no, it, it's about the experience. Like, what else are we doing today? Today's Saturday. We're fishing on the river. So I'll be out here from sun up to sundown because that's all I wanted on my agenda today and I can make that. Um, so it's really finding those moments and finding those places to create that, you know, really just, you know, creating that experience. You know, I, I'm thinking of Thea, we're going to Oregon, you know, the Tulip Festival, right? You know, it's, it's no Lamont Valley, not quite central Oregon, but it's happening this April. I'm gonna make sure to take a trip because that's something that she'll love and enjoy doing, uh, whereas not everyone would, you know? That's it, Reverend, your turn. 100%, 100%. Uh, Reverend's final words of wisdom, stay beautiful, everybody. I can't tell you how much 
I appreciate every single one of you. If you haven't already, please go like, subscribe, all that rate, all that fun stuff, or just tell a friend. Word of mouth works just as well. Um, you know, we appreciate any little bit of help that we can do and helps us helps us keep this going. Um, and we would really appreciate that part. Um, you know, April is here. Things are warming up. Summer is upon us. So if you are trying to do some summer plans, uh, start trying to figure it out now. Um, you know, they may, uh, may have to change things up because things will book up because there's people that book out way, way, way in advance. But now is the time to start thinking because the weather is warm. And so think about every detail that you can about a trip. So that way you can enjoy Mother Nature um, and all that fun stuff. But that being said, peace out, everybody. Bye. <laughs>